Hello everybody and welcome back to my tutorial Let's Play. This is episode 5 of Weather Mountains. The goal of this Let's Play, once again, for those of you just joining us, or maybe you forgot, is to explain the game as well as I can while I'm playing through it, with small goals per episode. In the last episode we covered the basics of traps, as well as setting up a front dro door's drawbridge. In this episode we are going to be trying to dig uh, a way for this little brook here, which is only ankle deep that the dwarves can walk through, into more of a useful power source for some water wheels down in our fortress. Now this is going to require some doing as it's going to be a bit of a distance for the water to travel, but once it's all set up it will provide an infinite source of power for our fortress, as well as a healthy clean source of water for our dwarves. So without further ado, let's dive directly in. So we're going to close this and one of the first things I'm going to do actually is I constructed these little walls here on either side of this walkway which the dwarves are using to bring li lemonite, limonite, or down into the fortress. Now we have these kind of open spaces here and this is a like a liability for the fortress. Something could climb up this wall quite easily and then simply fall down into the fortress. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this issue by digging some floors or some stairs directly up here. Once these stairs have been dug, we are going to fill this upper layer up with some roofing. Now something that I found that I think is really, really attractive in Dwarf Fortress visually and aesthetically is actually ramps as flooring. Now we could theoretically keep this little trap door here or fill it in with some uh, fill it in with a piece of rock to make a uh, a, a kind of a pillar in its spot so that the stairs get removed. But kind of what I think we're going to do actually is put a um, trap door on top of it just so that we can still go up here and mine out all of these lovely rocks and also at the same time lock this when it becomes a problem. So we're going to let the dwarves dig out this little area real quick which should get done quite fast. As they finish that up we are then going to move over to this wall piece and we are going to begin designating either side. Just make sure that we select uh, use material after placement as well as keep building after placement so that we don't have to do this multiple times. We're now going to place this down right here and I'm going to go over to, just as a real quick glance, I was hoping I had more blocks. Well, I, I do have a decent amount of, uh, or a single shale block rather, not a decent amount. I do have a, some dolomite lying around and some bismuth bars as well as a bunch of wood. don't really want to go using that wood, so I think what we're going to do is we're, well, mm, I guess we'll settle actually now that I think about it. Let's just use these uh, wooden logs that we have here for this. Uh, I'll, I, and in, in a normal world, I would want to use something a little bit more dwarfy, but it is what we have access to. It looks like we're going to have to, now that I think about it, install uh, a, be a better setup for this. But we're going to go along the edges here and once again use these uh, various different wood types that we have lying around here. And we are going to pause the game a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit of construction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dig or we're going to construct ramps over here on the end and we're going to go up on top to see how much of this almond wood I can use specifically because it does vary in color. And while I'm not going to be staring at this all the time, I'm going to know it's here if it looks a color that is different from other things around it. We are running low on that almond, though. Might have to go cut some more from the looks of things. I'm sure the elves will be thrilled with that. But, you know, it's not necessarily a strict thing that we stay friends with everybody. But, you know, I like to put off war as long as possible while teaching you to play the game. Well, we run out of that. So let's go with something that's close-ish. Uh, so we'll go with the apricot or maybe the goblin cap. Eh, let's go with the applewood. And uh, then once all of this stuff is filled in, then we're going to go around the edges. We're we're gonna need to go chop down more trees anyway, so might as well queue that up. We're gonna queue up some chopping down of trees, uh, just a few layers away, not too far, not too close, and then by the time we get back there, most of this should be getting done. We're going to go up here to the edges, and I'm actually going to use rock for this bit, but we are going to be selecting uh, just a couple um, I was going to say mudstone bars, but we're just going to use the normal mudstone boulders. And then these are going to give us ramps on either side to where we can then put flooring on top of all of this. So I'm just going to go down here into our work orders screen, and we're just going to queue up uh, rock, block, and maybe just like a hundred of them so that we just have some lying around for future construction needs instead of having to use my future charcoal supply to get these constructed. Now I, uh oh, I just realized I used the wrong tool. Um, I was planning on using ramps, but instead I selected walls. So let's just do that instead here. So I had some comments of people ask me why I'm not using repeating orders. And now the reason for this is I don't generally use order, uh, 
or order um what's the word conditions i don't often use order conditions and it's not because that they're an inferior or a bad way to play i think it's actually very much an optimal way to play i'm just an idiot <laughs> and my brain doesn't work and understand how if then statements function so i find them extraordinarily confusing and more often than not i end up just screwing them up and causing infinitely repeating orders that make materials that i don't want in my fortress which as you can imagine would be kind of a negative thing if i was uh, explaining in a tutorial format how to use them that being said i do have a basic knowledge and we will be getting some setup for drinks sooner rather than later but as you can see up here on the top we are doing quite fine for our materials we have a decent amount of food we have a good amount of drink plenty of seeds and lots of plants lying around so i'm not too concerned at this exact moment uh for the amount of stuff that we have lying around and the amount that is available to our dwarves however i I will remedy this, and we will get to that at some point. But for right now, uh, my just queue up jobs when we need it for a simple number of 18 dwarves, I think is doing us just fine. We're going to use uh, our dolomite uh, blocks and mudstone blocks for the roof of this, and uh, then we just need to go around the bottom and finish sealing this off down here, which we're just going to use wood for because it's available, so wood and peach is what i used for this so let's just do peach and peach where okay that's pecan okay you know what i just stopped caring we're just going to use any kind of wood that is available because it's multicolored already let's just get this finished and then we can begin digging so the next plan here is we are going to use this now sectioned off piece of water once all this construction is done to dig and we are going to dig from right here. So we're going to go down onto this lower layer where our... Um, oops, we're set to auto, so I'm going to just disable that real quick. Uh, we are now going to go down to this lower layer right next to this water. So you can see right around here. And we are going to begin digging. Now from this upper layer, you'll notice immediately, well, we got this uh, beautiful, like... Um, blanking on the name or vein already down here as we scroll down there's a few other spots we're going to need to dig through a lot of aquifers now this isn't necessarily an issue as long as we complete this task quickly because it is a light aquifer on this map so it is going to flow through but as long as we get it done fast and get to the edge of the map quickly and have plenty of space for it to drain we're not going to run into too much issue but we're going to need to do this quickly otherwise we are going to run into problems so we're just going to let all these jobs finish up up top uh let them finish uh cutting out all of this and once all this is done we'll continue with the jobs and continue with the video so do you remember how i said that we're going to be digging well we're finished with that little chunk. So what we're going to do is we're going to go just a little bit further here. I'm going to set this to priority one because I still have those automated jobs going on on the surface over there. And then we're going to dig down. Now, something we're going to need to be doing a lot here is checking where the water's going. So as you can see, we immediately dug down and then, well, we're in this other vein here, which we don't necessarily want to be in. So we're going to block this off here. We want to leave some of this sand accessible, though, for f potential future reasons. And then we're going to channel down this next spot. And then we're going to have a little wide open area here that we started from up here down into here. And now we're going to go down into that hole. And we're going to channel down the next spot. And this is going to be the way this works right until we hit our fortress. Now, as long as you do this one layer at a time and you're quick and careful, you shouldn't have too much trouble with the aquifer itself. Although, keep in mind, while you're channeling down, using this tool here to remove an entire layer of blocks, floor and everything, and replace them with ramps, you will start getting quite a bit of water flow. So if you are channeling through an aquifer, just make sure that you do this quickly and maybe widen it as you go so that the water doesn't flood and get too deep. Otherwise, you're going to run into some pretty nasty issues. Now, let's just see how much further we have to go and we're approximately where, where we're going to pop out. Not too bad. From what I can see, we also haven't hit that aquifer yet, which means we are currently winning. So we got this upward slope here, so we're going to go one next to it. And then we're going to jump forward and go one next to it. And we're going to jump one forward and go one in front of it. Jump one down. We're almost at our fortress layer. Jump one down. We wait. Now we're at the fortress layer. All right, so now we just need to go one forward once again. And we're right next to our stockpile now. This is almost perfect. I'm very happy with where we've ended up. So we're now going to dig two just normal digging, two across. 
They're going to dig that out, and it's going to look a little funky, but it'll work. Trust me. We're in a channel right next to this. And we're just going to begin channeling all the way along. And right next to it, we're going to dig right along here. Give us a little walkway here, as well as a doorway into here. So the dwarves are now going to dig all the way across. Now this aquifer is going to begin spilling in, which might look a little alarming, but don't worry too much about it because we are going to have a drain for this. We're also going to plug the top. So what we're doing, what we're going to do now while they're working on this is we are going to go to our masonry or stone workers shop, which is sitting up here, right? Now it's currently working on rock blocks. We're going to go over here and we're going to make floodgates. We're going to need about four of them in order to do this correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up a floodgate here and we're actually going to go over the work orders screen and we're going to type in floodgates which for some reason isn't letting me type. Let's try this again. Still not letting me type. Um, click on this. Hmm. Odd. Let's try the other screen. Are you going to let me type? Or is it my keyboard? Okay, it works on that screen. Strange. Flood gate. Uh, we're going to make them out of rock. So rock, flood gate. And uh, the other thing that we're going to need are mechanisms, which I think, yes, we do have a good amount still sitting here from when we made some earlier. So this is going to be very similar to our previous setup, and it looks like they canceled channeling this area due to, um, due to the water that's nearby, which is totally understandable. The water is beginning to fill in this initial spot. Considering we're right on the edge of this very complex multi-layer aquifer, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little annoying, but... It is fine. We're going to let them dig that out there, and it's going to just flow out and drain itself quite nicely. And it looks like we've got a good amount of space left, and it seems like the aquifer ends in the upper half of the map. So we're just going to dig and channel... Whoops, why do I keep on clicking the ramp up button? The channel down button all the way along. We're going to forbid this just so that they don't dig that up because I wanted them going down. And we're going to keep this little walkway along the side of it. Uh, since it looks like it's not going to flood and it should be totally fine, we're going to continue it along this area and just give us a open access to our water. Then, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do something kind of tricky. I'm going to walk up to the front here and we're going to build a little walkway across. Now, this little walkway is going to be designed to keep things safe. Uh, you don't really want water to come flooding in too fast, or you might run into some problems. Now, we wouldn't want that to happen. If, I mean, fun is great and all, but too much fun is kind of a thing into our fortress, especially when it's not expected. So, we're going to channel this out, and right underneath this flooring, maybe right underneath it, directly underneath it, we're also going to place to fortifications. Now, fortifications are uh, essentially like battlements in a castle, uh, which you normally would use to let uh, ranged units shoot through or uh, siege weaponry and dwarf fortress shoot through. But we're going to use it as like a vent for this water to flow through. So if something scary were to come crashing down here, it would bump up against that unless it was completely filled with water, in which case then we'd still be in trouble. But it's kind of a emergency stopgap for some of the worst situations. We are also going to build this little rock wall on top, which is going to connect with the ceiling, stopping any extra unexpected amounts of water from flooding directly into the fortress and uh, making sure it all goes through this lower layer. Now, we're going to go down here and we're going to remove all of these ramps just so visually this thing looks a little less confusing. Then this right here is the edge of the map. And I'm going to show you a real quick trick. If you smooth the stone at the edge of the map, right all the way over here, you're going to see the dwarves run down. Then right next to it, just like those fortifications, there's the option to carve a gap in a smooth wall to allow your archers to fire upon invaders. This also lets liquids flow through, and we're going to be doing that at the end here. So now we have the bed for a artificially an artificial river that is self-draining. We're going to use this for power. So as the dwarves run all the way along here, they're going to remove all of these ramps, but they still can get out at the end, so it's still safe. It's not totally dangerous. And uh, we do also have all these boulders down here, but we're not going to worry too, too much about them. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a door right here just so things look nice. So now, with all this aside, we've got a pretty decent setup. We've got flooring down here. We do have some water leaking out on top, but eh, it's just from this aquifer on the wall, and it'll be fine. 
And then all the way up, 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 all the way up to here, we have water flowing. Well, aside from the part where it's frozen because it's midwinter. But that's actually partially to our advantage because, well, well, it, never mind, it just melted. <laughs> or it just thawed at that end anyway. Uh, but over here, it's, it's still frozen. Now, this is kind of to our advantage as it'll give us a very good flow. So if we do have an oopsie, at least it'll stop for a good chunk of the year. Although it will make repeating jobs for things like millstones a little bit tricky. Now, what we want to do is up here, we want to put a door on one side of this, and uh, we would like to put a wall on the other side of this. Now, this is going to act as kind of a stopgap for any accidental surprise floods. We, we wouldn't want suddenly for the entire fortress to be full of water, I don't think. I, admittedly, that might be hilarious, but definitely not good for the long-term survivability of our fortress. We're also going to uh, go into furniture down here, and we are going to uh, connect... Well, okay, is it furniture or liquids? It appears to be liquids. For some reason, I always think this is going to be in furniture. Anyway, we're going to place two floodgates right here. So we're going to do, let's just say, two jet floodgates. Now we have these two floodgates here. What I'm going to do up top here is I'm going to make a little lever. So there's two ways you can do levers. You can either name them, there's the water. You can either name them, which is a pretty popular technique, or do it the way that I do it, which is simply place them close to the thing that they're going to be pulled and to do so that you just kind of remember based on the fact that it's close to the thing that you need. So because this is close to the thing that we need, uh, I'm not going to forget what this is going to do. You know, it's pretty easy to remember, but we're still going to name it for the sake of this video. So we're going to click on it and type in uh, water uh, off slash on aka whoosh mcgee all right so very very clear and obvious we know what this lever is going to do now we're going to connect it to these floodgates so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the link lever button and hope these children quit playing in here because they're very inconvenient we're also going to click this button the link lever times two and uh kids get scram go elsewhere be gone make yourself elsewhere uh, children do as they please. Anyway, so what we're going to do now while that kid leaves and then uh, Yuvash sits here uh, is we're going to wait for them to connect these two levers to this. Now, um, buddy, go away, both of you. I know it's an exciting... Okay, well, <clears throat> fine. If this is what you insist on doing, I will simply make this area safe for you, stupidity aside. Uh, we will simply wait until the dwarves come and place all of these uh, specific walls here uh, so that the worst thing that could happen is, well, um, we just dig around them. Perfect. So now that we have this safety wall here for stupidity's sake, I'm going to dig up on top of this, and we are going to dig all the way, all the way, all the way over to here. Now, this is going to bring us directly above where we are going to be channeling. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to channel down and remove individually la individual layers. But you always want to give a new toy a test run before you go, so let's just pull this lever to make sure it all works. So what this lever is going to do is it's going to open up these two floodgates, right? Now, what this is going to do is thunk right there. See? Perfect. We're now going to click on this and lower it back down, and it appears that we've also doubled as making a child's playpen. Well, that's great. Absolutely lovely. We're going to now grab our channeling tool to remove the entire layer, and we're going to knock out this one right here. And we're also going to knock out this one right here. And then we're going to knock out that one. Let's just go in order. And three. Should be safe. Let's just do those last two last. So we're going to hit that. Here comes the water. So it's going to flow out of this. So the water that's in this creek or this brook is very safe. Dwarves can walk across it with no issue or risk to self-harm. Whereas this new water that we've just dug out is not. This is very much deep. This is your very scary dwarf fortress water that you do want to avoid if and when possible. We're going to fill this all in with our dolomite walls just to give us a good safety net here. Actually, I think the way we're going to do this is we're going to be a little bit smarter. We're going to fill it in with flooring. And then we're going to build a wall over there right next to it. So we're going to do flooring. And flooring. Wherever it went. Where did my blocks go? There it is down there. Doesn't really matter what type. We'll just wait for the dwarves to bring it up. And then we're going to put a wall here all the way across. So there's absolutely no way something could 
get in if it wanted to. Uh, we're gonna do this and this, and then I'm gonna show you a real quick trick that most of you are probably taking completely for granted if you're brand new to the video game, but uh, you can actually build on top of floors, which is a wonderful feature, which is brand new to Dwarf Fortress. Uh, whereas previously you couldn't do this. This is like absolutely revolutionary for anybody who's played this game longer than a couple of minutes. So now what we're going to do is we are going to jump down one layer, and we're gonna pull our lever. And we're going to pause the game a lot during this so you can watch the water flow. Now be very, very careful with water, right? Be very, very careful. Very, very careful. See, pausing and pausing, and we're gonna see how far it's gone. Flows. You would like to turn off the numerical liquids. Uh, you can press, I think it's this button. Yes, F on the keyboard to have that turn on and off. So we're gonna unpause and pause again. This is going to fill up real quick. It's going down. As you can see, this torrent of water. Jump down to the bottom layer. We're gonna see it rushing down here. Here it comes. There she goes. And now we've got ourselves not only a safe, but infinite source of water that's going to just freely flow off the map. As we zoom out and unpause the game, here it comes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook her up to power and see what we can do with that. We could theoretically do a uh, flower. We could uh, make ourselves some automated uh, grinding stuff for uh, cooking materials many different things we could do. You can also see the power of the water by look, watching how it pushes the boulders. Look at that. All the way over to the end. All the way over to the end. If we turn the numeric liquids back on, we can see how deep it is. And our little safety net up here is stopping the water from bubbling up and over and forcing it to just flow directly along our little trench. Nice and safe. If we ever need to stop it, all we need to do is go back up to the top and pull our lever. Because, you know, you wouldn't want to get a whoosh McGee to the face. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up a couple water wheels. Because why not? And we'll figure out what we're going to do with them later. But for right now, we need water wheels. Because obviously we have water. So might as well hook up a couple water wheels and maybe put a millstone on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a couple gear assemblies. Now, if you want to do multiple water wheels in a row, that's totally cool. But you got to place them two tiles apart for the gear assemblies. So we have three gear assemblies. So might as well do uh, three water wheels. So one, two tiles. And then one, two three tiles. And over here, we can just simply place some water wheels on it. And this will give you a pretty good idea of the strength of water, if nothing else. Oopsies. I keep on forgetting that we have these goblin caps here because they came from my wagon, but they keep throwing me off. All right, so now we got that. I needed peach wood, so let's do more peach wood. That's now my wheel wood, I guess. And uh, none, and peach wood. And then our dwarves are going to bring these down. And then these uh, gears at the end can also be connected to just make one large power system using these axles, the directions of which can be chosen right here and there. And then simply clicking and dragging will connect them together. But I do have to say a real quick thank you to everybody who's been watching this series. It's been a lot of fun to put together, and I think that uh, the response to it has been overwhelmingly glowing. You guys have been extremely kind. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been joining us uh, along this time. Of course... Shoutouts to anybody who's joined in with the streams as well recently. I, I know that Twitch isn't everybody's thing here on the YouTubes, but there's been a lot of people coming by and saying hi, and it's been very, very gratifying. Can't wait to do all of this again when Adventure Mode comes out, because I think that'll be equally exciting. So uh, while this save screen is finishing itself up here, what we're going to finish this episode off with is we're going to make ourselves some more mechanisms, and we're going to get ourselves a millstone up and running, and then hopefully we can start making some flour, maybe doing a little bit of surface farming as well. Uh, over on the on the next episode and the next few episodes when we start getting some more migrants into this fortress I would like to get a military up and running and just kind of do the basics of that as we do have a nice little metal industry right here uh, and we also or I also would like to dig a little deeper and start finding some other things down in the depths because you know that's where the fun is really at right uh, of course if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover in this series feel free to leave it in a comment down beneath the stream or beneath the the, the video, sorry, old habits die hard. And it looks like we are through the loading screen now. So we are now going to click here and we're going to place applewood logs. I love the color of the applewood logs. They're such a nice dark color. So now that we have all that, we do need some more mechanisms and we're also going to need a millstone. 
in order to actually do this. So we're just going to wait for them to connect everything up, and I'm going to show you a few things about power. If you click on these gears, these gear assemblies, you'll see the amount of power that's being generated and the amount of power needed. These gears themselves and the axles all do require power, so the more power you can crank out of a small space, the better. Also keep in mind that the... Uh, everything that you're going to be powering with these also require their own power. And if you need an on-off switch for any reason, levers can be connected to individual gear assemblies, making uh, levers quite an important tool when messing with water. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our stoneworker shop and we're going to make one millstone. Now, a millstone is just, in this instance, going to be a one-off item. We're just going to make one real quick. We're also going to go down to this mechanics workshop and we're just going to make another rock mechanism because i'm pretty sure we're out uh and also we're going to check in on our metal industry and as you can see we do have a lot of metal uh and charcoal sitting in these workshops which is exactly what we would like to see i'm just going to check this smelter and see what we can do here currently there isn't anything we can make in the smelter itself and currently down here we do have a good number of shields made so what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to jump over here to the work orders and i'm going to queue up swords which iron swords which we are going to need Normally I do spears just because they're my favorites, but for for uh, for this video we're going to do iron short swords. We're going to do 10 of them. And we're also going to do iron helms. And we're going to do iron breastplates and iron greaves. Now remember we're using the work orders screen and we are just going to set up the default 10 for each of these. And we're just going to let our smiths go sort this out. Now, if we notice jobs starting to cancel, it means that we're going to have to jump in here and we're going to have to queue up some more charcoal or some more metal. But regardless, I think we're in a pretty good spot. However, I just, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to jump into the work orders screen and I'm going to queue up charcoal. And we are going to make, let's just say, about eh, 50 of it. Now, of course, we could go into the work orders screen and be all fancy. But like I said earlier, I'm not the greatest at this. However, for this screen, just so that you guys stop yelling at me, I'm going to suggest that you add the amount of refined coal uh, is less than 10. So if we have less than 10 refined coal, they'll queue up 50, right? And uh, if the amount of logs is greater than 50, uh, we'll queue it up. So if we have less than, 50, 10, less than 10 coal, they'll queue up 50. And that should work and shouldn't cause mass cancellations. But because I'm an idiot, it will probably cause mass cancellations. And I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments. So now that that is up and running, we have a little bit of automated coal. And uh, a, a, we have um, our little bit of automated coal, as well as plenty of iron sitting around. And a bunch of jobs queued up for our smiths. We now have this. And uh, I'm sure that that millstone has been constructed. No? I mean, I would be surprised if it wasn't. Let's uh, let's give it a shot. So, select material after placement. We're going to click right here. We have this one shale millstone and one shale mechanism. Perfect, perfect. Shale and shale. I like it. And so now, if we would like to make flour, we are going to need to have bags available, which I'm not positive we do. <laughs> but uh, we do definitely have this cloth bin here that is full of a good amount of cloth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in here. We are going to queue up some bags. So we're going to go to, uh, let's just say uh make silk bag let's make 10 silk bags we're also going to jump up to the surface here and just take a real quick scan around we do have rat weed we do have willow fruits uh, of course plenty of willow logs fisher berries and garlic leaves and i'm not seeing any plant plants let's just take a real quick look at our stocks and see what we have sitting uh, if we go to plants, as you can see, we have split, we have quinoa, we have plump helmets, plenty of plump helmets, geez, uh, pigtails, excellent, uh, and uh, longland and rope reeds. Now, I'm not entirely certain if any of these can be made into flower. Uh, I, th I think that longland can, I think split can too. So I'm just going to uh, do a real quick harvest all job up here. Just get them to harvest a few things, and we are going to go see if we can make some flour just to kind of cap off this video. We're going to just roll over to the end of this down here and mouse over and see if they're making those cloth bags just yet. They probably haven't been queued up just yet. And we're going to take a real quick look at this. So we can mill plants. So if plants are available 
and a bag is available, then they will bring the plant over here, bring a bag over here, and mill it into flour for us, which can then be used as part of cooking. And it's a very valuable cooking material, and dwarves quite like it in a lot of cases. We do have a check mark here, which means the job has been issued, and somebody is getting it done. Let's find out which dwarf is running the job. Looks like it's short ass. Now, if they do not have all of the materials that they need, they will cancel the job. So let's just let's find out. So they placed the first thing, and they're still got the mill plants job. That's a good sign, of course. And then they're running off and probably going off to go gather a plant. It, it appears that we are now hauling a pigtail bag. Looks like we did have bags available, which is optimal. And then they run over. Now, if we look at this uh, here workshop, as you can see, very lustful remembering speaking with a lover. I mean, who wouldn't be? Uh, down here we have Kenwa, which of course can be made into flour. Uh, and then down beneath you can see a uh, pigtail bag and Kenwa flour. And if we just give it a few seconds, we will get seeds back from this as well. So we could plant some of these up on the surface. Something for next episode. And then look at this. Kenwa fl flower bag. I'm, pro I, I'm convinced I'm pronouncing that wrong. As well as two seeds. So, covered in this episode, we built a underground river that is next to the fortress. We constructed a mill as well as some basic power as well as, uh, well, I guess we need to queue up some more bedrooms. You know what? I'm just going to finish up these new bedrooms, and then I will uh, finish up this episode here. All right, everybody. Well, it looks like we've run out of a lot of materials, so we're going to be needing to queue up more doors. We're going to be needing to make more cabinets and more chests, and we're also going to be needing to make more beds. So as they smooth up the rest of this stuff, I just got to say thank you very much for watching this series so far. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have made making it. I'm going to try and get an episode up every other day at minimum, as an episode does take about two hours for me to make between recording chopping, rendering, uploading, and all of that jazz. So thank you very much for watching this series. I'm glad that you're all enjoying it, and I hope to see you in the next one.